Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist and I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about pesticides and specifically DIY pesticides you can use for both your house plants and in the garden. So an all encompassing video for all plant parents that are out there. But first, I would like to say thank you to PD Mart and Connected to the Land for sponsoring this video. If you guys didn't know, Connected to the Land is a blog slash podcast resource that you can check out as both an American or a Canadian for all your needs. And when I mean all, I literally, I literally mean all. They do everything from bird watching, beekeeping, homesteading, gardening, uh, soap making, candle making, farming, chicken keeping. It's, it's literally, it's a resource that has everything. I'm personally addicted to the podcast. I did an episode with them, but they have a ton of other episodes that I'm sure all of you would find very, very interesting if you're into podcasts. They also have an enormous amount of resources, such as the Gardening in Canada Planner for free. So check out the Connected to the Land blog. I have uh, have a few posts on there. And then there's also actually quite a few other Canadian gardeners that they've uh, chosen to be a part of the crew. So go give them and some support, show them your love. And I personally would like to say thank you to both groups because you guys are awesome. Awesome resources for everything. I personally do an enormous amount of shopping at PV Mart and you might as well just take all my paychecks at the end of the day. So yeah. In order to understand this video, we first need to understand exactly what the term pesticide means and what it refers to. So first off, there are fungicides, there's bactericides, there are herbicides, and there are insecticides. All of those fall under the umbrella of pesticide. So keep that in mind as we're going through the video. Pesticide doesn't generally refer to just one thing and some pesticides can have multiple functions especially when we get into that DIY range. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite DIY recipe is for pest control and whether or not it worked for you. I'm trying to keep mine in this video super layman stuff that you would generally have laying around the house. I won't be talking about neem or anything like that. It is literally stuff you can grab out of the pantry and use on your plants. Very, very basic. Because I am a scientist, we will be throwing in some sciencey bits every once in a while as to why this stuff may or may not work for you. So the first one and probably the most important one is cinnamon. I personally use cinnamon. And now while there hasn't been a lot of studies done on the benefits of using cinnamon for seed starting, I personally have seen the benefits of it being used. It is great at preventing dampening and dampening is a generic term that refers to a variety of different scenarios that can happen with seeds or seed millings that eventually end up with death. And they kind of look something like that. Now, in order to prevent this, we need to prevent both bacterial and fungal growth. Cinnamon is a very gentle antifungal herb and therefore we can use this herb by sprinkling it over top of the soil surface in order to prevent in order to prevent rapid growth of any sort of mold or fungus. However, it won't work in scenarios where you have a fungal issue on a larger plant. It is much too gentle for that. So it won't work on adult plants, but seedlings or seeds, it will. It also will work great on house plants. Anytime you get any sort of that fuzzy stuff growing on the top of your soil surface, give it a little sprinkle of cinnamon and voila, you are cured. Now you can use this as a preventative, so you can preemptively sprinkle it on, or you can use it after the fact once you actually start to see the fungal growth. Number two is soapy water. And I personally enjoy using this on my house plants, um, but I have used it on outdoor plants for aphid issues, for example. It is great not only to increase the rate of photosynthesis and therefore ensure you have a healthier plant, but also is great for any sort of insect infestation that you may have, or if you have any sort of fungal or bacterial growth that may be happening on the plant itself. 
What I personally like to do is I tend to do six tablespoons of dish soap. Specifically, I use Blue Dawn, but you can use any dish soap, any will work. Castile soap will work great. I use six tablespoons for every one gallon of water. Then I like to dip a towel or a rag into that bucket, and then I actually like to clean the leaves both top and bottom in order to prevent any sort of any adults from surviving the soap bath, but also to cleanse any egg buildup that may have happened and even some other yucky stuff that those bugs may have left behind. It actually is great to do just as a preventative me measure once a month, um, and this will ensure that you won't have any pests in the house. The third one is specifically for the garden, but it works great, and that is beer. And I'm dead serious. And what Canadian doesn't have beer laying around? Hands up if that is the case. I'm pretty sure all of you at least have one can laying around. And what you do with this is you actually can just put the beer into a pie pan or a nice shallow dish, and the slugs and snails in your garden will actually crawl in, get a little tipsy, and won't make their way back out of the bar. So if you have a slug or a snail issue, beer is your solution. They love it, and then they go to slug or snail heaven. This one is crazy, and I've used this so many times it's not even funny, but garlic, and specifically peeled garlic cloves that are taken and then pushed into the soil. And for whatever reason, <laughs> it repels a huge number of pests both in your home soil and in the garden so i guess bugs have a little bit of vampire in them and therefore uh, they don't enjoy the smell of garlic it works great i promise give it a shot you will not be disappointed but literally bare garlic cloves shoved into the ground it most likely has to do something with the smell or whatever gas they give off. If the clove starts to shrivel up and die off, you would have to replace it over time. So just make sure to keep it nice and fresh, but houseplants and garden plants, it works awesome. The next two are also insecticides that work great for both houseplants or outdoor plants. The first one being pepper spray, and then the second one being tomato spray. The first one with pepper spray is you would literally use any sort of pepper. You can use black pepper, you can use chili peppers, you can use chili pepper seeds, cayenne, um, mustard, dill will work, paprika, ginger, anything with capsaicin in it. What you're going to do is you're going to add that to a water mixture. The rate is about two tablespoons for every gallon of water. Then you can add about six drops of dish soap and this is just gonna help it stick to the plants a little bit better. You don't have to use the soap if you don't want to. And then you can either put that in a spray bottle, give it a nice shake and actually spray it onto the leaves or you can again use it to wipe down the leaves, especially in a houseplant scenario. This capsaicin, bugs hate it. They absolutely despise it. Mealybugs, thrips, aphids, you name it, spider mites, they have a complete distaste for capsaicin. So anything with capsaicin in it, throw it into some water with a little bit of dish soap and voila, perfect pesticide. The second one being that tomato spray, you're literally going to take any foliage off of a nightshade plant. Tomatoes work better than others and you're going to mix all that foliage in to a water and let it sit overnight. You're literally just gonna let it steep. You know that smell that tomatoes give off and we like it, we like the smell of tomato plants or some of us like the smell of tomato plants? Well that smell some bugs absolutely despise and therefore you can use that as a spray or again a way to wipe off your house plants indoors. This stuff works brilliantly. Trust me, that smell of tomato will penetrate your home. I will forewarn you, if you are, do not like the smell of tomato, this is not the recipe for you. But if you like the smell of fresh tomatoes, then this is it. One thing you can do is if you don't have a tomato plant yet, is you can actually use the stems of the vine-grown tomato plants that you find in the grocery store. That will work just as well. 
This is my favorite weed hack, and I actually use this every single year for my brick uh, front yard. I have a lot of brick all over the yard, and it works wonderful for that. And it is vinegar, pure white vinegar. You literally just dump it on the weeds, and the weeds cease to exist. One thing you can actually start thinking about now if you want to prevent things like mosquitoes or black flies in your yard is actually what plants you decide to plant in containers or in the garden around your yard. There are a few that will work great, um, such as citronella for mosquitoes, sage, thyme, basil, rosemary, mint, rue, lavender, and even marigolds. All of these plants will repel bugs. Do your research as to what bug you want to repel and then figure out what plant that bug does not desire. For example, beetles do not like the smell of marigolds. So when you plant them around your potatoes or your tomatoes, you can have some resistance to those infestations. This one is definitely more so a houseplant hack, but you could use it for outdoor plants as well. And that is tape and actually taping the top of your pots. If you're Canadian, obviously you're going to use duct tape, but uh, taping the top of your pot so that the top of the pot has a nice clean surface and the bottom or the soil side actually has a sticky surface. And therefore any bugs or soil borne bugs that may be in your soil, as they decide to try to crawl up towards your plant, they'll actually get stuck onto that duct tape and then you can just throw that duct tape out. Probably one of the most important, however, and I had to save it for last, is increasing the microbes in your soil. Whether that be in potting soil or in your garden, the more microbes you have, the more resistance you could have to things like fungus, insects, and even weeds. And the reason for that is because microbes Generally, if they're beneficial, can use insects, for example, as food. So predatory nematodes or predatory soil mites will kill off a huge majority of pests that you may have. And even just fungus, certain types of microbes will actually eat fungal spores that can be harmful. And the list goes on and on. This term or this all encompassing look is actually called biological pesticides. So the use of biological to prevent pests. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to let us know in the comments down below. I want to thank PV Mart and Connected to the Land so much. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.